Okay, welcome to lecture number 17. Okay, matter and heat, part three. What I'll do is we're going to review pressure. We're going to do another example with pressure and unit conversion because I know you're all confused. And then we'll have a brief discussion of buoyancy and Archimedes principle, and that will be it. So we won't overwhelm you on this lecture. Okay, so let's go back. Pressure was force over area. And we said the units for force over area were newtons per meter squared. And we said that was called a Pascal. And then other units of pressure, we had atmospheres. We had pounds per square inch. We had mm of Hg, millimeters of mercury. And I think that's about it, OK? So let me give you another problem to practice converting units, and then we'll move on to discuss a bit about buoyancy. No math, just a bit of discussion. All right, so another problem. Here we go. What is the pressure exerted by a... 60, let's see, micro Newton force on an area of 20 nanometer squared. Okay, what is the pressure exerted by a 60 micro Newton force? on an area of 20 nanometers squared. Now remember, we want the answer in pascals, so we have to have newtons per meter squared. We have nanometers squared, and we're gonna have to convert, okay? All right, pressure, F over A, fantastic. The force is 60, Micro Newtons, micro, what is that? 10 to the minus 6 Newtons divided by 20 nanometers squared. Remember, one nanometer is a billionth of a meter. So one nanometer squared is 10 to the minus 18 meters squared. Did I do that right? It looks right. So here... Nanometer squared, I'm going to put 10 to the minus 18 meters squared. Now we have our newtons per meter squared. 20 over 60, uh, 60 over 20 is 3 times 10. Let's do this. Minus 6 minus a minus 18 is plus 18. So we get minus 6 plus 18. So 18 minus 6 is 12. And the answer is in pascals. Okay, so this would be the answer. 3 times 10 to the 12 pascals. All right, so you need to practice those unit conversions. Again, go to Khan Academy if you have to, or go to an earlier lecture. Good. Let's discuss buoyancy and Archimedes' principle. Okay, we'll discuss the words, see if we understand. Suppose I take this eraser, but this eraser, just, just, just let's say this eraser was made of copper, solid piece of copper, okay? I have a liquid, water, and suppose I take this piece of copper and I put it in the water. Here's the button. What's going to happen? Well, the answer is, you and I know, this piece of copper will end up on the bottom. It's going to sink. The question is, why? Why does this piece of copper sink? Well, look at it. It's a piece of copper. It's, a piece of copper. it's very heavy. So one thing we might say, well, it's heavy. It's really heavy. And its weight is making it sink. Okay. Its weight makes it sink. 
All right. Now, same piece of copper, same mass, same weight. Here's what I'm going to do with it. I'm going to take this piece of copper. I'm going to take my hammer. I'm going to hit it and bang it and bang it and bang it and bang it. Okay. Now, suppose this piece of copper has a mass M. I'm going to bang it. Bang. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a very thin sheet. And this is what I'm going to do. This is my piece of copper of mass M. Same piece of copper as I had here. Okay. Now I'm going to put this in the water. What happens? Well, here's the water. And here's the water. This part, there's no water. Now, same mass, same weight. What happens to the piece of copper? Well, I think you can see that now the copper floats. So in one instance, it floats, and the other instance, it sinks. Why? Well, the reason was given by Archimedes when he allegedly he was in the bathtub, and right before soldiers killed him, he said, Eureka! Eureka means I got it. I don't know what he got in the bathtub, but hopefully it was this principle. So let's look. What's the difference between here and here? Words, no math. If I take this piece of copper and I place it in a liquid, place it in water, wherever that copper is, you see there's no water there. It's displacing water, right? The copper is displacing water, all right? Archimedes' principle says, that the buoyant force, there's going to be a force upward called, called the buoyant force. This is the force that you, you know about this. When you try to lift your friend, ah, Vito, guy weighs a ton. In, when you go in the ocean, you try to lift him, it's easier. Why? Because the water seems to be helping. So this buoyant force is a force upward. The weight is the force down. So clearly, if something's going to float, the force upward has to be greater than the weight downward. The force upward is called the buoyant force. Archimedes said that the buoyant force is equal to, listen to the words, is equal to the weight of the displaced fluid. Remember, fluid could be a gas or a liquid. In this case, our fluid is, say, water. The buoyant force, the force upward, I'm going to go F, buoyant, the force upward, the buoyant force, according to Archimedes, is equal to, I'll write the words, the weight, remember weight is a force, the weight of the displaced fluid. Now, what in the world does this mean? I mean, really. Let's look. Let's look at our brick, our piece of copper like this. When the piece of copper is solid like this, there's no water here. There's no fluid. So the force upward is equal to the weight of the water that would have been there. Now, the weight of the water that would have been there, obviously, is less than the weight of the copper that really is there. So the copper sinks down because the buoyant force, the weight of that water that's displaced, is less than the weight of the copper block itself. Let's look in this picture. Where I say no water, this no water zone is really what we care about. It's going to be the, we're going to be interested in the weight of this no water zone okay what would be the weight of the water in this large region well this is a big region of water and if you've ever carried a gallon of water you know it's pretty heavy well the weight of this displaced fluid the displaced water right here is greater than the weight of the copper this little piece of copper now we're displacing a lot of water and the object floats. Clearly, way before Archimedes, fishermen and sailors from New Zealand to Africa to China to Native America, people knew how to build boats. And so they understood intuitively this idea 
of displaced fluid in a ship, right? Suppose you have a ship, one of those big ships in the harbor, right? You always see the water line, right? If the water goes above that, guess what? The water sink, the uh, ship sinks. Inside a ship, you must have essentially air. This is called ballast. You need a region with no water, again, to take advantage of Archimedes' principle. So the buoyant force, the force upward, is equal to the weight of the displaced fluid. Let's see how this could be used very quickly in a balloon. And we'll talk more about this in another lecture about adding energy. But let's just talk for a second. Suppose you take a balloon, ordinary rubber balloon, OK? And here's a balloon just sitting on the table. Now, suppose you blow it up with your mouth. You blow it up. So now you have the balloon like this. And it's filled with air. And outside here is air, right? You tie it up and you let it go. What happens? The answer is nothing. It sinks. Why? Well, the weight of the displaced fluid is really not displaced. It's really air. So it's the same there inside as outside. Plus, you have the weight of the balloon. The buoyant force is not, nothing. So how do you get a balloon to float? Well, one way is you put something lighter than air, like helium. You put helium. Now, watch. Here's my balloon. It's got helium in here. Helium means no air. So the air that's displaced has a weight that's greater than the weight of the helium. So the buoyant force, F up, the buoyant force is the weight of the air that's not there. And that weight of the air is greater than the weight of the helium, so the balloon rises. What about a hot air balloon? Hot air balloon. Well, a hot air balloon doesn't use helium just uses air. What does hot air do? Well, let's just talk in words for one second. Hot air, when you add heat, you're adding energy. We'll get back to this later. So let's look at air molecules. Here's an air molecule moving. Air molecule, nitrogen, oxygen, they're moving. Suppose they're in a balloon and they have energy. One half mv squared. Remember that? Kinetic energy. So each particle is like a little bumblebee hitting the wall, pushing out. When you add heat energy, you give greater kinetic energy. The energy goes to giving kinetic energy to the part. They start moving faster. When they move faster, they collide harder. When they collide harder, they push on the walls more. When they push on the walls more, the balloon expands. So when you heat something, it expands. As it expands, the density, the number of particles stays the same. But the number of particles now is in a greater volume. So here's my analogy. We have 30 children, 30, 30 school kids in a class. The density of kids is 30 kids in the class. Pretty dense, small classroom. If you put those 30 children in a football stadium, and they're the only children, the only people in the entire stadium, you still have 30 students. But now the volume is much greater. So the density, mass over volume, is a lot smaller. So if you keep the same number of particles in a bigger volume, the density goes down. Remember here we said that before we said that helium had less dense, was less dense than air. As you heat, as you add heat to a balloon, the temperature goes up and the density goes down. Why does the density goes down, go down? Because the volume increases. So the volume of the balloon increases. And what happens is this now, the hot air inside the balloon, is less dense than the cold air. And remember, the buoyant force is equal to the weight of the displaced fluid. The displaced fluid, in this case, is air, regular air. Now you have less dense air because it's hot. Greater volume, the density is less. So now the buoyant force... The weight of the displaced fluid is greater than the weight of this 
these air molecules, these hot air molecules inside. So uh, uh, Archimedes' principle has been known for many, many years, right? And even before Archimedes, people knew how to build boats. The weight of the displaced fluid is equal to the buoyant force, the force upward, right? And now next lecture, we'll start tackling things called the gas laws, all right? Enjoy. Have a good day. Bye.